And in a very important message is what I'm trying to give to the Indians and to the CIA and the US authorities. We as Indians at this point of time are indignant of what the US government has trying to pull by giving safe havens to terrorist Gurpatwant Pannu who threatened to bomb Delhi on Republic Day and the same Pannu who sent death threats to Air India flight during the World Cup finals. He is a US citizen. Is it surprising? What is the United States of America waiting for? Is it the, another Kanishk bombing blast that kills hundreds to then wake up from its slumber? Now here are the sinister tendencies of the US authorities for decades together. Now remember Tawavur and David Headley who are the criminals who executed the 26-11 blasts and then came, became the CIA protégés. They all gone back to US and there is no evidence of where they have gone into their burrows. How can one forget the mysterious killing of Homi Baba decades ago and the sinister CIA involvement in it? We need an immediate inquiry. We need an SIT constituted and we demand the CIA and the US authorities to release these secret documents and name the culprits involved and get them extradited to India. I start this conversation with R.P. Singh, he's the BGP National Secretary and the spokesperson of the political party and a proud Sikh and a patriot of India. R.P. Singh, the question that arises when the US continues to put pressure on India and what are its sinister plots and motives in trying to do so, to arm twist India into doing so, even when there have been several instances, as I have named 2611, Omi Baba, several others, where CIA has played a massive part in completely obfuscating the information that should have ideally been given to India, to these culprits, to these killers, to these assassins who created mayhem, terrorist attacks in India. Mega, thank you for calling me for your debate. Uh, after a long time, I've been on your show. Uh, but let's understand what's happening. Uh, now, American, uh, US government is saying that uh, Indian government is cooperating with us on, on the information provided and all. Well, obviously, Indian government is serious about it. And obviously, they will cooperate with any information which comes from any, any part of the world on terrorism because we are part of this, uh, we are the signatory on the G20 uh, declaration, which categorically in panel number 72, 73 states that any sort of terrorism which is happening anywhere in the world need to be taken care, funding of the terrorism need to be taken care, or any uh, land being used for ter terrorist activity or for terrorists should be nipped to the bud there and then. This is part of the declaration in panel number 72, 73 of the, where US, Canada, all these countries are signatory, even uh, UK, Australia are signatory to that. But Coming to the issue of Pannu. Now, Pannu not only has threatened uh, the bomb blast for the aeroplane, which is something of rep repetition in 1985, where Kanishka bomb uh, was exploded and more than 300 uh, plus citizens, uh, the, sorry, the, uh, the uh, passengers died, and out of which 260 were the Canadian citizens. Although they were Indian, but they were Canadian citizens. Now, they are, um, Mr. Trudeau is making a lot of noise on uh, uh, Niger being a Canadian citizen and being been killed uh, in a gang war there because of uh, the inter-gang rivalry there, which is happening uh, within the uh, Canada and America and, and, and US, uh, sorry, in UK and, and in Australia, where all these gangsters have gone now. Let me just, I'm just uh, mm. uh, digressing from the issue, but it is important. In 80s and 90s, remember, all these, uh, uh, Daoud and, and all these bhais used to go to Dubai. All these gangsters so used to operate from Dubai. Similarly, now all these gangsters which used to operate in Punjab and Haryana and, and, and part of Delhi also, and basically North India, they have moved to uh, America or Canada and, and they have tied up with the ISI and, and Khalistanis. And uh, as they used to use religion, uh, at that time the bhais used to use religion, now these guys are using religion for their uh, monetary objectives, for their financial objectives. So they are doing that, but I have another question to ask. Tomorrow, Joe Biden sub comes to India for 26th uh, January. This guy has already threatened that I'll, I'll do a uh, big blast in India on 26th January and public day is going to do a big blast. Now, what do Mr. Biden's CI will do if he has already threatened so? Well, why are they are not acting on the person, man on 
openly goes and threaten the Canadian Hindus uh, from uh, Vancouver and says all Canadian Hindus should move out, who, although they are the Canadian citizens. And then the way uh, the uh, our our uh, our uh, uh, his, his temples are being desecrated in 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 America in Canada, is clearly shows that there is a hatred being built up. There is a divide. They are trying to divide society there, and and they are threatening society to move out of the country. They are, and and who are who are these? These are basically citizen of Canada or America. If Tomorrow, Canadian Hindus have to move out. I mean, they are Canadian citizens, or American Hindus have to move out. They are American Hindus. So, are they not bothered in this case about their the uh, other citizens? Yes. Why are they only so uh, so much in favor of Pannu only, or why are they so much concerned about Pannu only? When Pannu went to Vancouver, also, if you go through the videos at that time, when he openly threatened the Canadian Hindus, they were. CII, as per me, they were the American and the uh, uh, Canadian security, which was provided to him for, for his cover. You can see those pictures; their faces, mm -hmm. which which seems to be uh, the uh, American security or the Canadian security guys right. who are doing the cover. But, but the point is, uh, it's not as if United States of America is uh, oblivious of the fact they very well know how this K2 operation has worked, and not to mention how America. At one point of time, and even now, has been colluding with Pakistan since the establishment of the country to then put pressure and play a divide and rule game when it comes to Kashmir and Khalistan. That's the plot. That's the agenda. That's the strategy that America has been playing to continue to put India under pressure, to continue to not have India evolved into a developed economy. Number five, that we are in a position of, we are going to soon reach number three. Obviously, there are these inhibitions. There are these fears amongst the Western nations, amongst America, and, and therefore this entire plot. Mind you, America has still not absolved itself of uh, holding discussions, hand-holding Pakistan, despite all terrorist havens that have been given evidences of by India. Lashkar-e-Toiba, e Mohammed, you know Osama bin Laden was in Abutabad in Pakistan. But why no stern action? Simply because the K2 strategy for America very conveniently works and that's why they want this to go on. Ambassador Basuti Mukherjee also on the show with me. And Ambassador, so can I make a small yeah, point? Yeah, can can yes. I just add to that? Yeah. Let's take it further. I mean, why, how can America forget what Hillary Clinton told to Pakistan? If you keep snakes in your backyard, ultimately they're going to bite you. Pannu is a snake which will bite America or Canada ultimately, no, mark my word. It's just, and it's not far. I mean, the way they are going is a matter of few months or year, I mean not more than a year or two, when they are going to do something big in America or Canada, only to prove their point that they, they hold some sort of notoriety with them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ambassador Mukherjee, quickly a view from you and my particular focus over here is, why are we not at this point of time raising direct questions? raising direct demands <coughs> at the United States of America. Dr. Homi Baba, who was killed in that mysterious air crash in Switzerland decades ago, why have the CIA dossiers still not been released? Well, first of all, Megha, let's stick to the present perspective, which is that the India-US relationship today in 2023 is completely different from what it was when perhaps the CIA in a dastardly plot, brought down Hobi Bhava because they did not want to be, want India to either become a great power or a nuclear weapon state. Today, what we are discussing is how should two strategic partners who have very important stakes in this partnership handle a sensitive issue without embarrassing each other. That is the whole point. And there the question arises, that has the United States handled this issue with more finesse than Pierre Trudeau? I would say yes. Could the United States have handled it better? I would say yes. Should the United States take damage control measures before the strategic partnership is impacted? I would say yes. And I would continue to say that if indeed some rogue official in our establishment has done this, either through being on the payroll 
of a hostile state hostile to india wanting to embarrass us or a rogue official as a rogue official this is something that can and will be sorted out between the two countries but we must remember megha that there is too much at stake for both india and united states we have started a process of modernizing our defense industry we have access to sensitive american technology we are trying to get drones we we are not at all in the position earlier when we went nuclear and there sanctions against us hmm. i would urge calm and moderation and allow those who are in government to sort this matter out without inciting a public reaction against united states and the strategic partnership because right now if you look coolly around you the united states strategic partnership is important for india's national security interest okay. as it is for united states national security interest and it is for the americans to understand that nobody likes to have a finger poked in the eye particularly when we've been colonized for 180 years they should cool down and cool off and conduct all these discussions in private okay. where they would probably have a much more positive outcome Maybe. i agree with you ambassador mukherjee but gautam uh, why is it that we are still being docile in handling the situation i think we should have directly taken it head on the way we took on the canadian prime minister justin trudeau and uh, particularly in contrast uh, Uh, the way united states of america handled itself in going about doing these covert operations whether it is about osama bin laden or those killings in iran or iraq uh, they go about holding press conferences they go about saying that you know this is what we've done these were the terrorists these were the criminals and that's what that's the end they they deserved and that's exactly what we have done and and the world rallies behind them so what stops india in doing so and why don't we point out again and again the very pertinent question this us citizen that you the citizen that you have given to pannu you have given safe havens to him knowingly what he is up to and while india has designated him there have been extradition requests that have been given to united states of america why is it playing down well uh, i think what we have to understand and i think the other panelists have alluded to this is that america and the west and china for that matter are uh, using multiple strategies when it comes to dealing with india china says look uh, let's not worry about the border let's increase trade america says you're our strategic partner but uh you know you must be very uh, easy on human rights and all these uh, protest movements uh, uh europe does similar things so i think we are equally within our rights to uh you know also execute multiple strategies and part of this particular attitude on both sides is that if they say look here why are you trying to kill panun through some rogue element or is that an indian citizen uh, or is he connected to the government of india uh, we have quite rightly said yes we'll investigate it uh, at the same time mm. the fact is that uh, people like panun and a lot of other people in australia canada britain have been desecrating temples attacking diplomats uh you know inciting violence talking of bringing down planes uh and uh, precious little is being done by them as part of a a a, a multiple strategy with regard to india yeah. so we 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 all we have to do is yes we look into it like we have done with canada say please give us some uh, concrete uh, evidence and we will you know find out who got nijar mm. if uh, at all it has anything to do with us okay uh, similarly we can do the same here a lot of people are dying in pakistan almost on a weekly basis and they're being killed by unknown gunmen uh, the pakistanis are not saying very much because these are all terrorists 
and uh, they don't know how to defend a terrorist. So they call them, you know, teachers. They call them nice guys of various types. Uh, and and uh, that the person was killed uh, by unknown people. So okay. I think uh, we okay. shouldn't be oversensitive. This mm -hmm. is a game of cat and mouse that is being played by various people with regard to India. And we have the same right as they uh, to play cat and mouse with them. Okay. We, okay. we will be a good strategic okay. partner. Okay. Doesn't mean we won't attack enemies of ours who, if uh, indeed it has anything to do with us or it if indeed we did it or third parties who are incensed by the behavior of these people Khalistanis uh, Kashmiri militants okay Pakistani okay. militants Fair enough. I, I, I get your point quickly then Arit, uh, Arit, Arit get, get into the conversation well, in terms of again I say why are we still at this point in time shying away in approaching the American authorities? Uh, like I gave examples of David Headley, the example of Tahavur Rana, uh, they have completely uh, gotten erased from the planet. It looks like US seems to have forgotten about it, India seems to have forgotten about it. Uh, there was linkage of the CIA agents with these terrorists who were given this bounty of, of causing this 26-11 attack where hundreds were killed. Uh, so so uh, were at that point of time, if you talk about 26-11 that happened a few decades ago and we were not strong enough, but right now in 2023, don't we have the gumption, don't we have the position to then take direct demands from the Americans? I mean, at the end of it all, uh, Mega, what we have to point out is this sheer hypocrisy of uh, our so-called Western allies. You know, for them, uh, their terrorists uh, should be uh, should be assassinated on foreign soil. They should be taken out on foreign soil. Uh, but when it comes to somebody else's terrorists that they harbor, that they platform, you know, people who have been convicted of uh, carrying out killings in other countries are essentially being platformed by our Western allies. So there is a sheer hypocrisy that needs to be spoken about. And I think the state in itself needs to be candid about uh, uh, and coming out openly to talk about. The problem why we don't do it is 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 quite obvious because US is obviously the mighty uh, power. It is the world's you know leading superpower at this point. And you do not want to rub them on the wrong side. Okay. That is pre predominantly why, why you don't want to do it. Okay. Uh, but, you know, going back to that particular case, uh, you know, we, we, we have to talk about, uh, you know, where the U.S. is done. Uh, Iran, for instance, 2020 was the year when they carried out an assassination of a, of a serving military officer in Iran. Uh, and this has been proven. Uh, when we come to Homi Baba's case, uh, you know, 13 days apart uh, between Homi Baba and Lal Bahadur Shastri, both were assassinated. Mm. Uh, you know, Robert Crawley was essentially... Uh, he spoke about the fact that you know this was essentially done to uh, to essentially mitigate the risk of India uh, becoming a rising atomic power. So we know for a fact that you know US has been involved in some sort of judicial extrajudicial killings time and time again. And now what are they relying on? They're relying on the on the so-called statements made by a drug dealer called Vikas Gupta and apparently. Uh, a, a U.S. Uh, a agent who Vikas Gupta was in touch with. Okay. So everything that the agent is pointing out at this point is the information that they are receiving from a drug dealer. Drug mm. dealer. So that is the kind of information that they are actually relying on. So you know, in okay. my in my opinion, this is all hocus pocus. Okay. Okay. All right. Quickly coming to you, R.P. Singh, in terms of the politics, and there have been questions that have been raised by the opposition leader. Some critics coming in saying that this was. Uh, a deliberate move by the Modi government talking about how when they fight out, weed out the Khalistani terrorists and raise the kind of narr narrative that the BJP government has been able to take just action against this uh, 
K2 terrorism. First, it was the abrogation of 370. Then you talk about how the Khalistanis have been cornered. There have been these uh, red corner notices, extradition notices, and then obviously the NIA charge sheet, the rap sheet against the against these criminals, Khalistani associated terrorists living in Punjab and Haryana and their homes being raided and their properties being raided. And, and it seems to have backfired. It was, you know, it is, you, you've bit off too much and it's difficult for you to chew it. Well, as I said earlier also that uh, as part of the uh, G20 declaration and as part of our policy also, we have been very clear that we will not accept any sort of terrorism on our land and we don't want others to uh, allow terrorism on their land also whether it's Pakistan or whether it's UK or US or uh, for that regard Canada or for Australia wherever they are and, and in whatever uh, uh, grab they are they need to be uh, uh, taken to task uh, by the their, their governments or here in India by our government. So uh, whatever can be done we have done at our end I mean I mean you might take it that we have gone little uh, uh, far, little, little far, but yes, that was required. If the properties of these guys have to be confiscated or have to be booked, then it was done because the, these are absconders from the country and, and that's as per the law, or Indian law, not nothing that, that we have violated the Indian law. One. Secondly, why shall we forget that recently the way Taranjit Singh Sandhu was heckled in a Gurdwara Saab? The way our diplomat Sanjay Verma or other diplomats in Canada are under threat. I mean, open sets are being issued by this element to our, our diplomats and, and to this extent they have been heckled now in Gurdwara Sahib, which categorically shows that these people are not even religious people. I mean, no religious enti entity will do something like this, especially a Sikh will never do something like this. Sikh will never go and heckle or not, will not, not stop anyone from coming to Gurdwara. Just recently, uh, uh, there was a Sikh gentleman who, who was trying to... Uh, uh, go against the wishes of the Khalistanis, he was again heckled outside mm. one of the Canadian Gurdwara. Yes. Uh, when our uh, uh, national flag, flag was discredited, he openly opposed it and then he was, he and with his uh, wife and with his elderly uh, father was heckled. So, gradually we have to understand that if today we don't stand up against such elements, tomorrow they are going to come and hurt us, whether it's within the country with, with the, from where they are uh, pushing their agenda or from our land I mean, and, and we are not going to uh, India uh, to be used by such people or uh, they, they will destroy the harmony of the country within between the communities or we not even will accept will sorry will 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 request the countries there also uh, other countries also that they should follow this line they should not allow these uh, elements uh, whether it's America UK or for that regard uh, Canada okay where such elements are as per me snakes who are ultimately going to hit them only okay Ambassador Mukherjee, again, you know, Islamophobia and the sentiment who support Islamophobia is prevalent across the globe. We see it in America, <coughs> Europe, and maybe we are also seeing the repercussions of it. Uh, there, is, uh, there is also these, uh, you know, it, what is cropping up is also Sikh phobia. And, and that's exactly what uh, these Khalistani extremists and terrorists are wanting to have in their favor. So, so when Trudeau says that this is freedom of expression and therefore you can go about holding protests, or when America gives and shields uh, Gurpatwan Singh Pannu because according to them, he has still now not blasted off an airplane, an Air India flight, like what happened in Kanishka. And it was mysterious, you know, though no investigations took place. And it was a shoddy job that was done by the uh, Royal Mounted Police of Canada and the CSIS. But, but now, you know, years have passed by. From 1983, it's 2023. So until and unless there is an Air India blast that kills another 100, 200, 300 people, uh, US will not wake up. Let me again try to put this debate in a perspective. There is a dichotomy, a division of opinion among Biden administration's officials about the strategic partnership with India, how far it should go or not. These various allegations which are being made public are coming from that section of the Biden administration that wants to scuttle the partnership. That's my first point. The second point is that we must not fall into the plot 
of what the Khalistanis want, which is to equate the Khalistanis with Sikhs. We have a very loyal, huge Sikh population who are completely committed to the integrity and unity of India. The two Sikhs who heckled my colleague uh, in the uh, in United States, they were escorted out of the Gurdwara and the Indian ambassador to the United States continued. He had his langar, he offered prayers and he left in a dignified manner. We as professional diplomats, we take such things in our stride. We don't ever think that two or three Khalistanis can represent the whole of the Sikh community. Yeah. When I was after okay. in Netherlands, I visited the, the Gurdwaras every, every week. Never ever was any Khalistani ever allowed to approach me. I was treated with utmost courtesy. And by and large, the Sikh diaspora outside India are also equally committed to India's integrity. Hmm. So we have to understand that this is again once more a policy of divide and rule. And if our pol political parties, as I just heard my colleague from BJP saying, if they are trying to make hay while the sun shines, they are not going to be able to make hay because the people of India will not allow it. The people of India do not support Khalistan. The people of India do not approve of this kind of finger pointing and putting the finger in our eye in public. Okay. And I'm sure, pretty sure, Mega, it's going to get sorted out privately as it should have from day one behind the scenes. That okay. is how diplomats work. Yeah. They, they don't do it in this public manner. And unfortunately, the American president should do something to rein in his own people. That's okay. All I Quickly and then, Gautam, a quick word from you before I wrap this up. Ted, the situation, again, the question of Sikh phobia. Now, there are obviously... Okay, I don't have uh, Gautam. Uh, uh, quickly coming to you, Adit. Uh, uh, Islamophobia. There is this small percentage of extremist terrorists from, from the Muslim world, from the Muslim community who put a bad name to Muslims and therefore this Islamophobia that is rampant. Similarly, there are a small, tiny percentage of these Sikhs who's, who call themselves Khalistanis. They are terrorists and they bring a bad name to the Sikh community and then they go about propagating this Sikh phobia and they take advantage of it globally. Uh, our, are America and Canada falling prey to this? Do they re are they much acquainted? They are they know really well what the plot is. But then there are other strategic, political, geopolitical obligations, limitations that they have to cater to. Keeping in mind, keeping India burning on both sides, whether it is on the Chinese border or it is on the Pakistani border, works in favor of America. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you, you know, you, you, know, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, a couple of minutes ago that, you know, K2 was a plan that was hatched by the Anglo-Saxon enterprise. You know, let's not forget Jagjit Singh Chauhan, uh, you know, the main sort of founder of the so-called Khalistani movement. He was, the meeting between him and Bhutto was essentially facilitated by the Americans in New York. He met uh, Bhutto again in London. Uh, so all of these meetings was, were essentially facilitated by the Anglo-Saxon enterprise at the end of the day. So the K2 movement is essentially hatched by the intelligence agencies of our Western allies. Now, okay. why do they want to keep this ally? Uh, why do they want to keep this alive? Is probably you know because they want to play a carrot and stick game with India. They probably want to extract something uh, of of significance from India at this point, which is why you know they they, they keep on. Uh, 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 keep on doing this. You know, I just wanted to point out this particular uh, issue that you brought about, about Sikh, Sikh phobia. In the UK, there was a report which was published by uh, a gentleman called Colin Bloom, who you've also platformed on your channel. You've extensively covered his particular report. And his report extensively covers this aspect that the Khalistanis are a very minuscule minority, but an extremely feral and vicious minority. Yeah. Uh, and they have a lot of political clout. So the Labour Party or the or the other parties or the e, or even the Conservatives for that matter are essentially pandering to their uh, to hmm. their vicious agenda, which is why they are not taken to task like they should have been. Yeah. I mean, you know uh, what happened in Glasgow with regards to our ambassador Vikram Doraswamy in any other uh, part of the world or any other ambassador, uh, you know, uh, going to any other place 
uh, for a visit of that kind would have been an act of criminality yeah, for the I mean I, I couldn't country. imagine if something of the sort were to happen to a US diplomat to a US ambassador in India I mean all it's hell would have break, broken loose all right anyway I, I mean, just uh, yeah absolutely I'm, I'm sorry I'm out of time I thank all of you for joining me on the telecast we'll keep a close eye on these big developments and how India at this point of time has to react hold this resolve to take point blank the question and set it up talking about the past uh, digressions that have been made by America, the, the CI legacy of uh, holding these terrorists and giving them safe havens. These are the questions, these are the demands that India needs to make of American authorities. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.